And now the, the, we've had the dad, the super dad, the JR, the JR Plus, and now we're on the Junior 3 coming out, first of the yeah. year version of that. Well, you know, you don't throw something away that worked. No, and know? it still works beautifully. And so, and, you know, and I, and I think if I'm right about this, I'm pretty sure I am, that pretty much 90% of almost all the products you make now have some sort of recovery process. They do. And, and in fact, the original dad that was built 12 years ago, mm -hmm. Um, we were submitted through DPL for testing, and it right. is a full gig, six gigs per channel. So it still that's works right, that's on right. an it's 18 still, gig system. It still handles the, uh, the 18 gigs. Which gig is awesome. Over. Yeah, yeah. what a mistake that was. So <laughs> Should have never been that good. <laughs> yeah. um, so th that, that's, that's that. And then we also have to talk about the low-end portion, don't we, Brent? Because we talked about yeah, that. Yeah, we run into that with some specific products on yep. the market where... They work and then they don't work right. on other systems. It all comes. It all talks about this 80-20 rule. Now, th under normal conditions, it's not. It's really 90-10. But we work on 80-20, and um, and what happens is that everybody's worried about this this high-end rail. Uh, but what Phillips did, they said, okay, we want to make sure that you guys do this right. So we want to make sure that your low end has to be lower than lower than 0.9er. That's volts DC, point niner, and so that's cool. As long as you're less than point nine, everybody's everybody's just hunky dory. Anything below point nine should be considered a zero. Everybody, as far as they're concerned, anything below point nine is considered a zero. Well, that's really great, you know. You got all these products out there, and they come in they're pretty good. They come in at point seven, you know. They come in at you know point six, you know. If they come in at one, they flunk. They're, they're out of the box, at least in the DPL world. They're out. But yeah, you got these guys coming in with the numbers, and wow, that, that guy at six is doing pretty good, isn't he? Damn good, real good. There's only one little snag with that guy at six, and that's if he's talking to another guy that's looking at point two. Or point nine. No, no, it actually it works the other way because as the, as, the, as, the, as, the, as the product gets better and better, I'm talking mm -hmm. about source products now, as the product gets better and better and better, and it links up to another product, and this is just reverse, right? Just what you just said, right? So let's say it's 0.2 at this product and 0.9 at this product, right? Well, this 0.2 is not going to like this guy at 0.9. Right, because it's not going to recognize it as and, a zero. Yeah, we found that, and uh, that was a major development because we found a lot of products, especially active cables. I don't care if they're I2C cables, I don't care if they're AOCs, I don't care if they're copper, I really don't care. I don't care if they're fiber. I, don't, I care nothing about that. The point is, is that unless you have these rails, and I'm going to say a rail high and a rail low, you're very high risk for having bad status control. So we corrected that too. And that is also and built into the, in the JR Plus, mm -hmm. the AIO2, right. the newer and in the ones, JR3. Right, the newer ones, after the first original dad, is when we converted them over for a low end rail. And then at the same time, you have to worry about this five volts because sometimes it doesn't talk to another guy with five volts. I mean, in Phillips, in Phillips spec, you can actually be down to 3.3. But 99.9% .9 of the product out there remains at five. The only difference is that if the five volt rail gets pulled down for any reason, now what do you do? And what I mean by that is, okay, let's look at the five volt rail for a minute. Am I doing all right with this mm -hmm. as far as timing? Okay. So we have a five volt rail. So, and it's a rail, we call them rails. So here we have this five volt rail, five volts. And everybody's fine, everybody's happy. Well, in HDMI, we've got relatively small current. They're only, we only got about 50 milliamps. So at 50 milliamps, you know, you can't run that much off it. So you have to be sure that, you know, the sink and the sources are, are, are happy in their current ratios. So they're not drawing any current. The, 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 the sink will automatically draw current. So anytime you plug a device in, uh, um, you know, at DPL laboratories, we have a, a large amount of equipment that operates at the, at the same time. You get a snapshot of everything that's going on. And as soon as you plug it in, you know everything about the, the stats of the product, whether what the voltage numbers are, what the current ratios are, what the, what the rise times are. And we know what this number is on the rail. And that number could vary between point, it could be five, it could be, it could be 4.7, it could be 4.1, it could be a lot of different variables depending on what it is. And as soon as we plug that in, we've got sinks that we plug that into that immediately pull 10 milliamps right off the bat. 10 milliamps, that means uh, immediately we just drop this down to 40. 
So that, that, now that's all we got left. It just robbed us with 10. Well, if somebody does a no-no and starts pulling a little bit too much more current, this current's going to get so high that the power supply in the bus is, going, is not going to be able to support that. And what happens when it doesn't support it, this 5 volts begins to drop. And once it drops too low, typically 4.7, uh, now the system's really going to be uh, in bad shape because uh, the system is looking for a no more, no less than 4.7 volts. Well, we still have another problem because this 5 volts actually is the same 5 volts that operates I squared C. So if we've got this 5 volt here and we remember what our rail looked like, now we've got to say, okay, if we're operating at 8020 and this value comes down to, say, 4.5, instead of five, our 80-20 rule just got broken. So it's no longer high enough to be registered as a high. It's not a high high, right? It's not a real high. It's a high kind of with a little bit less, right? So, and, and, but this, it helps out the low because if the low is high, well, that's a little bit lower. And everything works together. It's not, some, not a perfect world. So you, all these products have to be looked at with everything in mind. Loading, um, capacitive loading, uh, rails on both sides, Supply lines, current, all these things have to be taken into, take into consideration. And that's just on the I squared C bus. I mean, we're not even into the TMDS side yet. So it gets very complicated with this. Now, I and do think our AIO2 specifically addresses these issues. Yes, that was my next point. And so now, with, with the newer products that are coming out that, uh, that Metro's got, uh, they actually have re railers so that now it will come in data will come in, say, it for the 5-volt rail, and if this one here is, say, 4.4, this will differentiate these two and make them common. So they, they, they don't know which one's which, and everything's, everybody's happy. So, uh, you know, these are s small, excuse me, small little, little details that a lot of people don't know that goes on inside those boxes. And there's a lot of little details like this that, that occurs. Now, the AIO2 also deals with current issues as well to make sure there's enough current on those feeds. You know, on, on the AIO, in the, on, the, AIO on, the, on, the, on, the, on the supply line, yes, what we do in AIO is, is, is they don't necessarily depend on HDMI's 5 volts anymore. Now they've got an external uh, dial blocked so that it doesn't make any, any bad juju anywhere. And that stuff gets, gets put into uh, another external power supply. And now you can put a power supply in there that's, you know, that's two amps. And now you got all the power you want. Or you can do all that around here. And you can run all kinds of goodies off the same bus. And so, yeah, that's, that was one of the things we did in that. And since you mentioned it earlier, let's talk about the TMDS voltage and current. Because we have seen a lot of problems with that of late. Particularly on some of the set-top boxes having insufficient return voltage and current from the display sides. Okay, are you talking about voltage and current on the TMDS? Yes, itself? I am. Um, yeah, that's, a lot of people don't know this, and and we, we've caught it. We 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 caught it more when when the when the, when the first red mirrors came out. And I know you're gonna say, why does red mirror have anything to do with this? It has a lot to do with it. And the reason why is this: um, when you look at a system environment for HDMI, you have a source over here. I'm sorry, you got a sync over here, a display, and then over here you have a source. And the source is playing some goodies, and it's playing some video. So what we call it in our industry is the output of this wiggles. We call it wiggling line. So it's, it's wiggling. And it's wiggling with square waves and all kinds of little data things. Wiggling. Well, how's it wiggle? Well, it's usually wiggles with some kind of switch. It's, so it's like, it's kind of like if we had a, if we had voltage here, some, some, some voltage, let's call it DC, and we had a light bulb and that light bulb went into a switch. That's a pretty good switch, I guess. Uh, uh, uh. And we have that switch. Uh, well, when it's on, of course, this becomes low. But when it's, when it's off and the light's not on anymore, this then becomes high. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this wrong. It's this side, this side. So when it comes, goes high, it goes high. And when it goes low, it goes down to, into, into low to rail, well, low, low to ground. So. This little switch, of course, they don't use a switch. They, they do it a little bit more high techy, And they use, in, in the most, uh, a lot of the older ones, and, and they maybe even today, still today, inside the chipsets, uh, they convert them over to probably some, some form of an FET. 
field effect transistors. And those FETs act like switches, and those switches are constantly moving, and they're wiggling back and forth. Here's the game on this one. Here's the good one. The good one is that in order to make a wiggle, you have to have some power to make a wiggle. So if you want to wiggle it, say, up, almost like our I2C bus, if we want to wiggle it up, and then we have to wiggle it down, well, that means that we've got to, we got to give it some form of way of pulling this up. And that's the term, by the way. It's called, how do you pull that up? And you pull it up uh, by way of some form of DC. Well, the sources don't really provide any DC. So when the source is not connected to anything, and, and, and if the source were to try to modulate some form of video, it could sit there and wiggle to death and nobody would know it was even there because there's no power. The power actually comes from the display. So the display actually sends power back on the TMDS lines. Which are the video feeds. Which are the video feeds in differential. It's differential mode. And then this, this, this power back is what gives us the pull-up. And that's how the pull-up is done. So I'll give you a little another picture of a pull-up. Here's a resistor. <clears throat> And uh, this, is the, this is the data line. Here's our switch down here. There's a little switch down here that does the short out. Here's the pull up over here. So this pull up comes over here, goes down here, and it says, oh, the switch let go. It's an open circuit now. Pull up. And it pulls the square wave up. And then when the switch collapses, pull down, and it pulls the square wave down. So if you don't have this, this voltage, you're dead in the water. It's not going to work. So. And how does this relate to uh, Red Mirror? Red Mirror? Yeah. So this is where it really got cool because Red Mirror had to somehow, remember the Red Mirror part is, a, is an equalizer, right? It's an inline equalizer in the, into your cable. So that means that that cable has to be, here's you got this cable going along, and then in there there's some form of amplifier, and then that amplifier goes out into the TV set. Well, okay, how are we going to get this DC that's sitting over here, 3.3 volts, how are we going to get that back over here? we got this in the way. So they have to contend with that, and they did. They did that by, by actually doing their power harvesting. They actually picked power off the bus to power the unit because it, has, it doesn't use external power. And then they powered it also by the 5-volt supply line, which really was a no-no, but they did it anyway. And they took some of this bias, and they brought it over here, and they, and they I'm sorry, and they built a pull-up. So they actually supplied their own pull-up on the inside or the input side of the red mirror. And that worked out really great, except some of them would come in as low as 2.2, some of them 2.3. We found out that, you know, if you're not doing 2.6 or so, you know, you're going to be on the edge there. So now we've got to be concerned about, is this voltage going to maintain enough voltage to handle the pull-ups? And so in since both devices. In both devices. So that we're always watching this pull-up current and how much is being sucked out of that thing that's gonna, that's gonna, that may hurt that pull-up. And, of course, that pull-up, there's eight of these pull-ups. There's eight of them. Here, there's two per channel. Think about it as stopping at the bar on the way home and spending your rent money on beer. <laughs> yeah, unless maybe you do it. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But you. that's basically what's so, happening. There still has to be enough back there to do the job, and if that's stealing it... It ain't there. Yeah, when you rob the when you rob the when you rob the voltage out of it, you know, you know, I mean, you need voltage to make anything work, right? How you, you know, when you plug your TV set in, you got to plug it in, right? So you know, they don't just sit out there and work on their own. So, so what you learned in Red Mirror directly moved forward with what we're seeing with thinner, longer cables, smaller power supplies, and higher demands. Well, it, again, it depends on the configuration of the system and how the so, how and, and what they've got in line that could hurt those that could hurt those power supply lines. And at the end of the day, uh, we actually ended up building. Uh, I, I believe it's in the AIO. The ACVS was the original was, one. Is that what it was? Yeah. Right. We're actually, in, in just in case somebody didn't do their job, there was a product that was designed with its own built-in pull-ups so that if you're at 3.3, nothing would happen. If it was at 2.5, it would bring it back to 3.3. If it was at 1.4, it would bring it back to 3.3. And so these, these are hard rail pull-ups that will always be there, and they were, they were as they now, were they that were supplemental. feature set is built into the AIO2 and the original AIO. I, you know, you'll have to, I, I don't remember all that, but, you know. 
there's two a, song there's a lot of stuff out there for yes you know? there is a lot of part so, numbers so yeah but that is a great problem solver now we're about out of time for today's broadcast but if you have any questions give us a call i'm here and you can always call jeff Boccaccio at dpl labs yeah email me jeff at dpl labs probably the best way any problems any questions let us know the uh jr plus the um aio2 are currently in stock and shipping and fixing problems today any more questions give us a call i'm brent and this is jeff Boccaccio. ciao thank you hi i'm bob pancari midwest territory manager with metro home theater I'm here with Adam Rogers, hey, uh, technical support and product manager. We'd like to invite you to the AWA training at 350 North York Street, Elmhurst, Illinois, where we'll be talking about some HDMI questions and the HDMI issues, uh, basically HDMI 101. Yep, so we're going to be talking about 8K. We're going to be uh, having an HDMI 101, kind of just a question and answer thing going on. It'll be kind of like a little live tech support uh, session. So if you have any questions for being out in the field, I'll be there to answer any kind of questions you might have. Uh, and again, Bob and, I'm, and myself will be there at that. We'll be at 350 North York Street in Elmhurst, Illinois. It'll be on March 11th from 8 to 12. So if you have any questions, contact your local AWA rep or myself uh, here at Metro Home Theater. We'll see you guys there. Thank you.